in part three, we're going to take a look at modeling the label back. We're going to model it using Bezier curves. So if your desire is to learn how to use Bezier curves a little bit better, this will be a good tutorial. I have a template imported into the background. We're just going to come up to the front. I'm going to press Shift and A, and we're going to come down to the curves, and I want to add a point. Now make sure that you have the extra curve objects add-on enabled. So click point, and it's important that we set it to 3D. We're actually going to be switching back and forth between 3D and 2D in this tutorial, so you can see the contexts that these two options play. But for now, we're going to go into 3D. We're looking at this whole scene through the front view, and I'm going to place that right there. We're automatically dropped into edit mode. So I'm going to press the E key to bring out another point. And I'm just going to do this every so often. E, E, E. There we go. I hit the W accidentally. E key. And then finally down there. This is selected, and I want to make sure it's exactly zero along the x-axis, so I'm going to type in zero there. A key to select all the points, and we're going to press the V key, and we're going to set to automatic so that they have a smoother interpolation. But the top here, the top needs to be flat. Okay, so the incoming and out curve need to be flat. S key, and then the Z key, and then I'm going to type zero. Click. We'll do the same thing at the bottom. S, Z, and then zero. Okay. Now remember, we have two modes of editing curves in Blender. One of them is using the traditional approach where you select an element and then you grab the point and you manipulate it. But the other, the newer one, is using the curve pen tool. And you are free to use whichever. The curve pen tool requires fewer clicks, so I can directly select like this, edit and move and so on. So it just really depends on what it is that you want to do. So I'll use the curve pen tool here. In some cases, I like the traditional editing a little bit better. Click, hold and drag. Because now, there we go. I don't know, there's something about the original editing that I do kind of like. But this works quite well. So I did all that editing with the curve pen tool. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come in and we need to mirror this. So what I want to do is I want to note, first off, where my cursor is. That's always important. It's the center of the universe, which is where we want it to be. A key. And then I'm going to press Shift and D to duplicate that curve. But I'm going to press the Escape key, press the Period key, and we're going to tell the pivot to go to the 3D cursor's position. So now I can press the S key again, press X, and then minus 1, and it'll flip it to the other side. Now, the next thing that you want to do is note that there are some extra options enabled. And if you don't have this enabled, come down to Preferences, and in Add-ons, type Curve, and you want to have Curve Tools enabled. That's built in. I don't know why they just don't enable it, but make sure that is enabled, and that will give you a bunch of extra editing options. So what we want to do is I'm going to select everything, so I'm going to press A key while we're in edit mode, and we're going to come down to Sanitize, and we're going to say Join Neighboring Splines, and at the bottom it'll say Applied One Join on Two Splines. But it hasn't completely closed it. So what we want to do is let's come up to the top, and I you can see I've selected that, and I'm going to press the G key. When I move that, you can see that these are still opened. And what it did was it joined both of these paths down here at the bottom, but it left the top open. Well, it turns out that in order to make a closed spline, there's an option we need to click over in the Properties panel, but I first need to come over and remove one of these segments. And we're going to let Blender decide which one it needs to remove by clicking this point and pressing the X key and then delete Vertex, and it's removed that segment. 
So now we're going to come over here into the object prop data properties for the curve and come down to where it says active spline and enable cyclic U and that will tell it to close the spline for us. So the next part is to create this. This is going to be a counter space. So I'm going to press the tab key and I want to come down here and I'm just going to take the 3D cursor tool and I'm going to move this up pressing the Z key. I'm just going to move that up. It's gotten a little bit off. That's okay. So we'll just come over to view and I'm going to set the X for the 3D cursor to zero. Shift A. And we're going to add a circle, just a basic Bezier circle. And it's going to be huge. I'm going to make it one inch and I want to align it to view. S key will scale it down. G key Z. I'm going to move that up so it is like that. S key. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to press Shift and D, and I'm going to put a duplicate right here. S key. But you see it's scaling from the 3D pivot location. So I'm going to press the period key, and we're going to have the pivot go to the active element now. So that's going to be the same as clicking the actual move tool or scale tool and have it visibly appear at that location. So S key, we're going to scale that down. G. Okay. Now let's come down here and edit this first. I want to remove half of it. And in order to do that, I want to come into edit mode for that. So I'm going to press the tab key. And let's just come over here where it says active spline in the object data properties. If we turn off cyclic so it becomes an open path, you can see it changes the shape of the path and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to undo. We're going to press the V key and we're going to change the handles to free. And that just means each one is independent. But that's fine because that preserves the shape. So now we can come over and turn off cyclic and I'm going to press the X key after highlighting that point and we're going to delete that vertex and then we're going to take this and we're going to rotate it hold the control key we're going to just rotate it by 180 degrees and then I'm going to move that back into location right there okay now I want this to get duplicated over to the other side so what I'm going to do is reutilize the pivot since it's right there. Press the period key again. In this case, we're going to have the center of transform effectively be at the 3D cursor's location. Shift and D to duplicate escape key and then the S key only along the X axis by pressing X and then minus one. We'll put the duplicate to the other side. Hit return or click. Now I'm going to select across these two vertices bring up the context menu and we want to make a segment between them. We can do the same thing here, F key. I'm going to press tab to leave edit mode. When we look at this, we've got both of these independent splines that we need to merge into the same spline object, but they are at the same position along the Y axis. They're flat to each other essentially. Bring up the context menu and invoke join. Let's come back to the front and we're going to press the tab key. This takes us back into edit mode and we're going to come back into edit here. We want to use a function that's going to merge these together and, and like a Boolean operation, but we don't want it happening down here. So I'm going to select these handle points, press the G key and I'm going to move them up. But do you see how it's changing the shape at the top? So let's escape marquee around these, press the V key and we're going to make these free aligned again. G key Z and it won't do that. It won't change those shapes up there. So what we need to do now, select these and let's take a look at it, what we're going to do. Come up to Boolean splines and try and click that. It's going to give me an error. It says can only be applied in 2D. So what does that mean? That means that we have to come up here and we have to tell these Bezier curves that they're two dimensional switch that back over and now Blender thinks of them as being planar to each other. So now we come up to Boolean splines. Look at that. Now what we need to do is press the tab key and we're going to join the original outer Bezier curve and this one together. So we're going to join those. 
and I'm going to turn off the backing template. But you see, they're not flat to each other, and this is going to be a problem because they need to be. So if we come back over into the left view, tab key, A, and if I press S, and then Y, we can flatten them to the same location. I'm going to type 0 and click, and then that will get them to the same location. Okay. Well, if we press the tab key, let's do something over here. Let's come over to shape. Do you see where it says fill mode, full? But we're not seeing any fill. And that is because it's not in 2D mode. It can't fill it if it's in 3D mode, even if all the points are planar to each other. But as soon as we come over and try and change this into 2D mode, our shape disappears. And this can be really confusing if you don't know what's going on. In order for the 2D function to work, it's expecting all of the points in the curves to be on the local X and Y grid. So we need to somehow reorient this so that's the case. We're going to come over and we're going to do a set object origin to geometry. Press Shift and S, and I'm going to do cursor to selected, which will drop it right there. Now I'm going to go into edit mode, and we need to rotate this. And we're going to do it in edit mode because we can reorient the geometry inside of object mode while maintaining the object's current local axis because we need to get all of these points flattened onto this Y, X axis. So we're going to come over to rotate, and I'm going to begin rotating down. I'm going to type 90, and those are now planar to the X and Y grid. Now we can come over and change it to 2D, and it allows it. And then we're able to come over here and fill it. Then back at the object level, now we can come and rotate it back into position, negative 90. There we go. And that is what allows us to get that into that position. So I'm going to press tab key to leave edit mode and let's rename this. We're going to call this label Bezier. And I want to duplicate this. I want to maintain the original Bezier form and operate on a duplicate. So I press shift and D, escape. And this one we're going to call polygon. I'm going to hide the original so we can come back to that in case we need to. Before we go farther in terms of converting it specifically to a polygon form, we need to come down and give it a little bit of thickness because the real paper has thickness. So let's come down to geometry and we're going to extrude this by 0 0.05. I think maybe that's just a little bit thick. So let's do 0 0.03. Okay, there we go. Now we also want to give it just a little bit of rounding. So if we come down to bevel, where it says depth, let's do a very small value of 0 0.025, and that'll give us just a little bit of rounding. But the key here is that we also need to UV map this because we're going to be placing a label on one side of it, but not the other. In fact, I still think that's too thick. So let's come up here and let's do 0 0.02 because that, that was a little bit too thick still. Now, before we get going too much further, our fill mode needs to be both, because we're going to be having a label on the front and a texture on the back side. So as we, you know, as we look at this, it still feels maybe just a little bit thick. So I'm going to change this to 0 0.01 just to thin that up a little bit. In fact, I even think that the rounding is just a bit too heavy. So 0 0.01 for the round depth works a little bit better. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is to prepare this for UV mapping and prepare it for the materials. I'm going to have this come into the front view. So I'm going to press the tilde key and come into the front view. Zoom in a little bit, press the tab key. Now we want to convert this explicitly to a polygon mesh because you can see when I'm in edit mode, we're still working with a Bezier based object. So bring up the context menu, convert this explicitly to a polygon mesh. And the one I've named as polygon is now technically a polygon mesh. Now, if I press the tab key again, if I am in edit mode with the polygon mode selected, I can select a single polygon here 
and if I do a select linked, you can see that it's only selected these front facing polygons because when it generated this, it didn't weld them to the bevels, which actually works pretty well for what we need it to do. So when we come down to the materials, if I press the plus key right here, we can assign a new material slot. This slot is what we assign the polygons to, and then a material is what gets assigned to the slot, which is what's assigned to the polygons. So we're going to call this label assign. But we also want a little bit of this bevel. I want the bevel to also get assigned. So I want the label to kind of creep around the corner. It's a very small detail, but we might as well do it. And we'll do the same thing here. Hold the shift key just to add these assign these. Now we're going to do a select invert. You can see if I go out of into x-ray mode, you can see the backward facing polygons are all selected. And we're going to assign these, we're going to hit plus, new material, and we're going to call these paper. Click assign. Okay, so all of the backwards, if I press tilde and then go to back, we can see all of those on the back side are going to be the paper, tilde, front. These are going to be label, which we can select right there. Now we need to get this UV mapped. So let's come over to the UV editor. In fact, you see how it's intersecting. I want to come over here. I'm going to press the tilde key and we're going to go to a left view and it's in front and I want, I don't want it to be in front. Press tab to leave edit mode come over to the move tool and I'm going to move this behind. There we go. Come back to the front. Sometimes when you have flat objects and you're working in a non-perspective mode, it's actually easier to keep track of what's going on when you're specifically selecting a view, I find. Okay, tab key. A key to select all the polygons. Since this is flat, we're not going to try and do any kind of unwrapping. And it's also a closed mesh. So we're just going to do a project from view. There we go. Along uh, left to right X, let's put 0.5. So it's very specifically at the center. I'll move it up a little bit. And then S key scales that. Okay, there we go. So that's pretty much ready for material application. So let's jump over to shading. I'll zoom that in and we're going to come over and add a material to the correct label. So I have a label selected and we're going to come over here and add an image texture. Okay, let's find that in the textures. Floss backing color. We're going to bring that in right there. Give it a second and there it pops up. But the cool thing is it's only on the front. It's not on the back because the back has the paper along with a very slight amount of the edge too, which will show up in higher res renderings. Okay, and that is the process of stepping through for generating that piece of geometry.